motion to this project and, and getting us to a final resolution. And so with that, I want to introduce Mr. Spencer to come and talk to you about the project. Spencer. everybody for coming out this evening. Again, I think uh, Supervisor Bailey and her team and the task force and everybody that was here to, uh, to help facilitate this as well. So um, obviously uh, we're going to go through some information here. A public, we're calling the public information meeting. Um, my name is Spencer Atkins. I'm the director of the CCR projects for Dominion Energy. We've got a few other folks here uh, this evening as well that could hopefully uh, answer some questions that you may have uh, once we go through the uh, presentation. So the presentation will be very similar uh, for those that was able to uh, attend or see the first uh, presentation we did back in January. So we went through those and we had some Q&A after, after that session. So we're going to uh, ask that we do that the same way. We kind of go through the presentation um, and then we can certainly uh, ask questions that we can go back into, you know, go back to a particular slide if, if you want to see the slide or whatever and we'll, we'll just go through it that way. So uh, with that, uh, I think we'll just go ahead and kick it over to the next slide, please. So before we get into the actual presentation, again, with most, most of the uh, public meetings that Dominion does, we want to make sure we highlight some of our core values, uh, safety, ethics, excellence, embrace change, and, and one Dominion uh, from a teamwork perspective. And you know, safety, safety uh, you know, I, I tend to at least try to throw out a safety message uh, whenever we do these types of meetings. and. You know, today, um, as I was getting ready to come up here, there was a, as most of the folks around here probably experience almost daily or at least every other day, there was a, a, a pretty serious accident on Interstate 95 coming up from the uh, Richmond area. So, um, again, uh, just, you know, when you're driving, drive defensively, uh, try to look ahead, predict what other people are going to be doing, and just try to, you know, maintain uh, control of your vehicle at all times so that you don't have, you know, some of those accidents that we, that we see a lot. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is, uh, we've got a couple slides here at the beginning, just kind of show uh, where the station is and where our ponds are. And this one is, uh, you know, at the lower left here, that's the station itself. Uh, you can see uh, off to the right here, uh, our switch yard, and then that big area that looks like a, a water body, that's, Pond D, and that's what we're here mostly to talk about tonight. You'll see some references to some other ponds uh, at the site. Originally, uh, Possum Point uh, had five um, ponds, and we've consolidated that into one pond, and it, all, all the ashes in that, that Pond D right there. So we'll get into more detail about that in a few minutes. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just another view, just looking at a different uh, perspective, different direction. Uh, you know, now, you're, now you're looking back toward Pond E. Uh, the, what you see, the big area at the bottom of the screen here is what we would call Pond E. So again, there was a lot of ash in that area. And at the upper right, there was ash in that area that has been, again, consolidated into what were the big water body there that you see, Pond E. So just again, to highlight the work that's already been done, to get all that ash into one pond and so now it's just sitting there and you know again we're proposing a landfill we'll talk about that in a few minutes uh, next slide please so just a little bit of background again i think most people realize this uh with with the work that we're doing uh with the coal ash uh and the ccr removal uh the the the, uh, the law that's driving this uh we, we refer to it as citadel 1355 it was passed in 2019 uh, basically, it covers four sites uh, within our system, and you can see there, just at a high level, where those four sites are located through the Dominion Energy System. And of course, tonight we're here to talk about Possum Point. Uh, Possum Point, we have three other sites, Greenmo, Chesterfield, and Chesapeake, out, out toward the city of Chesapeake. So, uh, and you can see on the slide here, we've got about 27 million cubic yards of ash. And you can kind of see with the different volumes, kind of where Possum Point ranks in, in those, uh, those sites. Uh, just some basic uh, things about the bill itself. Um, of the 27 million cubic yards, we have to uh, beneficiate at least 6.8 million cubic yards of that, and it has to come from at least two different sites. Uh, we have to utilize a local workforce. Uh, we have to develop a transportation plan for anything that goes off-site. So that would be us working with the county and or in, you know, if we were in Chesapeake, the city of Chesapeake, whoever the locality of authority is, we would work with that particular group on a transportation plan. And of course, the, the work that we're doing is, is a cost recovery. 
uh, subject to an annual cap. And again, we're on a 15 year time clock and you'll hear us refer to that a couple times. Uh, again, when the bill was passed, 2019, so here we are in 2022. So we're already, you know, we're about 12 plus years out from uh, having to have all this ash either taken off site or taken to a landfill or having been officiated. Next slide, please. So, so this is probably one of the more uh, in-depth slides in this presentation. It talks about different options. And I'm not going to read all this stuff. You guys can kind of see it. But if you look, you know, again, we're, we're here tonight, you know, our, we, and we mentioned this back in January. Our, our proposal is for an on-site landfill. But we put some other options in here uh, as far as um, what we have gotten either through direct bids for different combinations on how to deal with that ash or estimates uh, just over the past four to five years. And so you kind of see where, you know, again, this, this is meant to show not only the cost, cost is one component uh, that we have to look at, but you have to also just consider, you know, if you're going to beneficiate it, how much of the ash do we think can be beneficiated? We can talk about that a little bit more if you like. Uh, transportation, uh, duration, how long does the project take, you know, under those particular options? Um, what kind of technology? If you're going to do your landfill, we talked about the double liner system, and we'll, we'll, there's a slide on that in a few minutes. If you're going to beneficiate it, what is the most likely way to beneficiate it? So you can see some of those options, uh, cement replacement or, or a cement kiln type application. Again, the local permitting, obviously working with the county, going through the county process, uh, getting the approvals uh, through that uh, process, uh, different site plans. and. Um, land disturbance and ENS permits, things of that nature, building permits. And then environmental permitting, of course, there's different combinations of environmental permitting depending on what we do. So obviously uh, the DEQ is going to be very much a part of this process. Whatever, whatever path we choose here, we're going to have to go through the DEQ. There'll be public meetings uh, at some point with the DEQ to talk about, you know, what, what we're going to be doing. But this is just kind of illustrating sort of a pros and cons, if you will, of the different options. Just to kind of, you know, try to pull all that kind of stuff together. So again, uh, you know, again, transportation, a lot of people talk about, we don't want trucks on the road, uh, you know, so that, you know, you start talking about rail, uh, we can talk about uh, other means of transportation as, as we go along here as well. But again, just, just wanted to point out the key differences in these particular types of options. Next slide, please. So, Again, the, the, this is a rendering. Obviously, this has not happened. We, we're not in the process of building anything yet. We're at the very beginning of this process. Again, we got to get approval from the county, if, you know, before we go on to the DEQ or anything like that. But this is just meant to show kind of what the pond looks like out there right now, how it's going to change in the future uh, if we're able to build a landfill. And you can see we're proposing to build a landfill right next to Pond D. Uh, this just kind of shows how the, the you know, pond existing, uh, we would take down the berms, we would, you know, plant grass, leave it in a vegetative state, um, just to, you know, again, try to make it look natural. Uh, and, and then the pond E, or the new landfill, again, we would cover that, it would be planted with grass and everything, so again, you would, you know, that would be maintained by Dominion. Uh, and you can see a lot of other things on here, stormwater ponds, um, any contact water, uh, this is a key point that I'm sure we'll talk about a few times tonight, but any contact water that is up there right now in Pond D and any contact water in the future that as we're excavating the ash, any water that comes in contact with that ash is considered contact water. Uh, so now that has to go through a water treatment system. So you can see, you know, again, this is all conceptual, but we think we would put the water treatment system down where what we used to be called ponds A, B, and C, uh, and put that treat, treatment system down there. You'd have to treat the water. Again, that's a DEQ permitted process. Um, so again, anything we do is going to have it's going to go through a very extensive uh, permitting process. A lot of uh, input from the public, uh, either directly through the county like this or through the DEQ. So again, this is just high level. You know, just kind of show you conceptually what uh, the site would look like with the on-site landfill. All right, next, next slide. Okay, so the next few slides uh, that uh, we want to just touch on real real quick here, uh, and we do have poster boards. I should have mentioned this earlier. We got some poster boards. I think most people saw that on the way in. We can, we can certainly you know, talk about some of those later on if, if people have specific questions, but 
Uh, this is one of the post boards that we have. Uh, this is kind of just to illustrate if we do the work on site where you know the, the major operations would occur. You're basically transferring ash from one spot to another, again, with on, within the Dominion property. So you're seeing just basically uh, a truck route that basically stays on site there. So that's what that's meant to illustrate. And again, you can see you know the, the landfill will be just directly next door uh, to Ponding. You can see Possum, Possum Point Road. You can see the station. So look for those that live in the area and know the area pretty well, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. But again, it's just kind of illustrate um, where where that landfill um, would, would go. All right, next slide. So this option is if you trucked it off-site. Again, this is just a, tr a potential truck route. Uh, what we try to show here is basically you're going to have to, you know, truck material from uh, the pond, pond D that's there now. You can see it going out pond, uh, I'm sorry, Possum Point Road. And then once you get the route one, Again, I guess there's a couple of options. I'm thinking most would go north uh, and go up and hit 95 and take it to wherever, wherever they would go, or they would possibly come go south and then get on 95 there. We obviously wouldn't know that until we actually went out and if we were trying to get an actual bid for that uh, or you know get a contract to give us a bid or a proposal for this. But that's just to kind of show, at, at a minimum, you're gonna have to haul that stuff out. Again, it's just trucking on you'd basically have to take it out Possum Point Road and either go up or, you know, north or south and then make their way to 95 before they would uh, take it to their uh, potential off-site landfill location. All right, next slide. So this is um, sort of a combo. This is, again, taking it off-site. This would be, uh, you know, proposing if, if we were to build a rail loading facility, you can see that little, little box in red there, um, there's a, obviously uh, there's a railroad or rail rail spur uh, right next to the Possum Point Station, and if we were going to have to rail this off, we would obviously uh, take the trucks and come over, get on Possum Point Road or Cockpit Point Road, and come down and come over to the station and come to a rail loading facility that, that's not there now. We'd have to build a, a new rail loadout facility, and then um, this is just meant to illustrate that you would pull it over by truck. And then you would put on the rail and it would either go north or south based on wherever the end uh, user or wherever they're they're trying to take the ash to at that point so that's just again one of one of the options combination of a rail rail truck option next slide please all right so one of the uh one of the key things uh with the uh items that we're proposing here is the the landfill liner Composition. So this is just a bit to illustrate, sort of, you know, what a, what a typical line landfill looks like. Obviously, there's a lot of line landfills um, in Virginia and around the country. Most, if not all, have a sing what I call a single HDPE primary liner. If they have that type of material, it's usually a single liner. Uh, but what this is really meant to illustrate for for the folks here and for the folks who are watching online this is meant to show that we're, we're doing a secondary liner um, again we, we understand there's a lot of uh, uh, questions and concerns about you know uh, lining uh, the landfill so again we we agree as we go through this process that if we're able to build a landfill that we would do a double liner system so that, that's kind of just wanted to point that out and again um, we can we can answer questions or talk more in detail about that as, as we go along but this is not standard. This is a this is a you know more than standard. This is a very robust system, and you know we think it, it would work very well, and it would be a great fit for the for the landfill here. So, <clears throat> with that, uh, next slide, please. So uh, I got a summary slide, and I got a few more slides after showing some pictures. So I'll, I'll get you know I'll I'll, I'll take a, a few minutes to go through that. So the summary of options here again, we you know. We've, we've been working through the process. Um, I mentioned the, the Senate Bill 1355 effort, uh, you know, the law that's driving all this work that we're doing. That was kind of a, I'll say, a culmination of other Senate bills and other legislative acts that were created a couple of years, two or three years in a row prior to that, where we went out and got estimates, where we went out and got proposals, 
Uh, we provided business report. We, we provided summaries that illustrate all the different com combinations of, of ways that you can take care of the ash, whether that's an on-site landfill, off-site, or beneficial use, or, or various combinations. Based on what we've seen, based on what we've done, we think, you know, for Possum Point, we think the uh, on-site on landfill is by far the lowest cost to the customer, but it also has the shortest construction duration, uh, minimizes noise and dust impacts. I mean, you're going to have that. Uh, some of those impacts, whether you, you know you do your work on site or you take it off site, but we think by shorter duration you're going to you're going to you're going to minimize some of that. Uh, minimizing truck traffic to the local neighborhood again, we we understand that's a, that's a major concern and we understand why and we we've heard that before, so we're trying to you know uh, take that into account as well. And uh, obviously we'll need trucks to transport equipment, material, soil, that kind of thing, but. Again, most of the activity, if we're able to build an on-site landfill, will be contained to the site. So that's that's one of the other reasons that we think this is a, a good choice. Um, again, I mentioned that we had ponds A, B, C, and D e, um, that also had ash in them for years and years. We consolidated those ponds into pond D. E. Uh, we've done that successfully uh, with uh, no impacts on local neighborhood. And one thing I did. I should really probably key on this a little bit earlier, and I'll just say it again here. It's one of the last bullets on this slide. You know, the uh, Dominion, it's, it's not like we can, you know, if we're able to build this and we get the permits, uh, we're, we're going to be, it, it, we own, we still own the landfill, we still own the operation, we still own the maintenance, we still own anything that happens. Uh, that, that's still Dominion Energy, and that, it'll be that way. It's not something we can sort of transfer or, or just get rid of. Uh, we, we will always uh, administer and take care of landfill. So it's, again, it's in our interest to make sure it's done right, uh, to make sure that, you know, because we don't want to have issues with it, just like you guys wouldn't want to have any issues with it. So obviously it's something we, we would take very seriously as we go through that process. Um, meet, meets or exceeds all the DEQ requirements. Again, I've, I've mentioned the DEQ several times, the Department of Environmental Quality. Uh, again, there's a ton of permitting that, that happens um, that when you go through a process like this, and of course we would go through that process. And it's a very public process. Uh, inspections, again, all those permits are going to require tons and tons of inspections. Some are, you know, weekly, some are daily, some are yearly, some are, you know, different frequencies. But there's going to be different types of inspections that are going to, that are going to be required uh, throughout the whole the whole process. And, and for decades to come, after after we uh, build this thing, so just want to make sure people understand it. it's not a, it's not something the me is going to walk away from. And then uh, so the post construction land use options again, uh, you know the men obviously want, you know if we're able to do this, we got some areas around the site that maybe possibly could could use for other uses, uh, for public use and things of that nature. So again, we're open to those kinds of discussions. Um, and so uh, I think we, we've made that, made that clear as well. So I think we see a lot of benefit to us being able to build a landfill uh, on the site that we're proposing. So the next few slides, I think this should go, yeah, so this is, uh, again, we had some folks out, some of the task force folks out on site last week. It turned out to be a really nice day. Um, we were concerned about the weather, but it, it turned out to be really nice. But again, you can see some of the folks are kind of standing uh, on the west side of Pond D. You look back toward the station, you can kind of see what that looks like uh, if you've never been there before just you know you're kind of on a gravel area right there where we're standing but all that would be eventually taken down and you can see in the back corner where that water is that's again that's part of pond D. all that water is going to be treated we can't just release that water we're capturing all the water that's on the site now wherever we have uh, any of these ponds even after we clean them we're capturing all that water so we're pumping it back up and we're maintaining we're keeping that water and once the work starts, we will have to treat that water. And I, I think I've mentioned that already. Uh, next slide. So this is Pond E. Uh, for those, again, that live in the area, if you've driven into the station, this is the one that you'll see on your left as you're driving into the station. It's right there, right next to Pos Possum Point Road. And of course, it used to look a lot different. Now it just looks like a big, you know, open area. And we planted some grass in there. And it just sort of, you know, right now it's sort of in a <coughs> vegetative state. Um, waiting for us to, to, to take the next step in the process. Next slide, please. 
So this is, uh, you, you heard me talk about ponds A, B, and C. So again, we've taken the ash out of this area as well, put it in the pond D, and so now it's just a graveled area. We drove down, people walked around. We got a couple of um, basins that we're capturing the water in. At the moment, we're taking that water, and again, we're pumping it back up to our, our pond D, so we're capturing all that water. And again, once we start the work, we'll treat uh, any and all the water that comes in contact with the ash. So I think that's the last slide. Yep, that's the last slide. So I guess at this point, um, we'll start opening it up for questions. And again, uh, if I can't answer the question, I got some folks here that can help. So I'm not sure how we want to. Go ahead. Here, I got a mic. Oh, sure. Hey, thank, thank you, Spencer. I um, did want to just take a brief moment and recognize uh, Yolanda Green. She's one of the co chairs of the task force to say a few quick words. Good afternoon. I don't even know what time it is anymore. Good afternoon, I think. I've been going all day. So uh, first I would like to ask that the task force is a representation of people who live in Potomac Shores, also live in um, Possum Point, and then experts. So I'd like to ask the task force to please stand because I'm just a small representative of the group. So if the task force will please stand, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you, so please, because they put in a lot of work. Thank you so much. And we had an opportunity to visit the site, and that gave us a different perspective, I think, when we walked in, because just living on the road, you have one perspective, but then when you're actually there, you can see. We, got a, a, we were able to understand a tad bit better. So just a couple of things that I would like to share with you before we start our questions and where the task force is the, our reason for being pulled together was to provide a perspective to Supervisor Bailey, Vice Chair Bailey, to be able to um, go forward. So one of our opportunities is one, we are going to do a presentation to talk about using, utilizing the barge. So that's the first one, to bring, have a barge, to take and recycle the 50% that we can recycle. So we're gonna talk to Dominion about that. And the second opportunity is if we can't move forward with that, we will go to the landfill. And then our third is to the future of that land. Possibly looking at, and they don't know this yet, and nobody, but we're looking at maybe a park and renewable energy opportunities with solar and et cetera. So that's where we are to kind of make it reusable and because a lot of people walk down that road. So I'm going to, that's what we're going to share, talk to you about a little bit better, more, but who am I turning this over to? Spencer. Okay, Spencer. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Thank you, y'all. Thank you so much, Ms. Green. I, let me just say, um, one of the things that we wanted to do is to make sure that it was open to everyone and to make sure that we have lot, it was live streamed and everything. We're having some technical difficulties, but you know, that's okay because we're recording this as well so that we can get it back out to the community uh, via my website, via my uh, Facebook and everything because we want to be transparent in this process. We're not trying to hide anything. We're trying to work through this. And so that's the first thing I wanted to say. The second thing is, um, Ms. Barg had mentioned to me about the information that we passed out just to get you here. That information uh, was for the, through the graciousness of Dominion Energy. And I really appreciate it because my, my, uh, my budget couldn't afford it. <laughs> from the county and I want to make sure that I'm expending the taxpayers money appropriately and so I really do appreciate that just in getting people here the invite here for people to come and so I thank Ms. Barr for bringing that to my attention but I wanted to let you know the processes that we use and why we're using those processes and the information will be brought to you um, via video after this meeting so just wanted to let you know as an update today thank you all right, thank you very much. Okay, so I've, I've seen a couple folks, so we could have somebody go around. Go ahead uh, with your question. Hi, good evening. Thank you for having this presentation. I would uh, like to know if any studies have been conducted to determine impacts of earthquake. So uh, being so close to the water. So I know uh, as far as the station. You know, the station's been here for a number of years. station's been here for decades. I know when they built the station, there were earthquake studies that did not associate with the station. 
I have not uh, looked at those studies, so I don't have anything specific uh, in terms of what those studies entail, but that's something that uh, I would have to go back and take a look at. Uh, go ahead, Chris. You guys can, oh, go ahead. On the evaluation of the dams, seismic is a component of the evaluation, and we had we did that initially with the CCR regulation and had to do it here recently. And uh, the uh, Possum Point Dam, you know, and the Pond Pond D is fine. Uh, in addition, with the landfill option, seismic is a requirement of the permitting process. What does that mean? As far as when you say seismic, seismic, as far as earthquake evaluate, I'm sorry. As far as earth, earth the impact of earthquake would be evaluated, you know, on whatever design for stability to make sure that the landfill is constructed the and it's safe. Excuse me. The design would have to be compatible. The design would have to pass, have an adequate factor of safety to withstand an earthquake. Yes. What magnitude of earthquake? I would have to go back and look. Uh, there is a design requirement in both the DCR as well as the Virginia DEQ regulations. But they're going to get bigger, <laughs> according to the study. So. My name is Ralph Gruen, and I live on Possum Park Road for the last 20, 30 years. Uh, one concern that I just uh, noticed is you know, you said there's uh, soil will be delivered to the new site and looking at what they're building it's going to be 120 foot high or whatever landfill so in my opinion there's probably a tremendous amount of soil that's going to be brought to that site so comparing that to removal of the um, the coal ash what percentage Soil versus removal, is there 50% as much? Because that's directly related to the truck traffic on Possum Point Road. So you can have an enormous amount of truck traffic just delivering the soil. Yeah, so we, yeah, as far as the number, I don't have a number yet. Again, that's conceptual. We haven't, you know, studied out exactly how many truckloads we would be brought in because a certain amount we're going to try to use of the soil that's on the site now. When we're building, when we're excavating, continue to excavate that area. We're going to try to use what we can, but then we'll, we'll probably have to some, have to bring some in. To your point, now the other the other thing I'll, I'll add to that, the work that we showed you that we've done in ponds A, B, C, and E, uh, there was soil, lots of soil that we brought in for that as well. I think we did that pretty efficiently. Uh, I think we did it safely. Uh, we we you know tried to lessen the impact to the local community. So. Again, I think we could do it and not impact the, uh, the local community as much as trying to haul off, you know, a lot more ash than, than the soil that we'd, be, that we'd be bringing in. But those were just a few, those were small sites, I mean, compared to, compared to what D right. is. But, and, but, and that took over a year. Yeah, I mean, again, it'll, it'll be coming in, you know, when we're building the new pond, Again, as we're, as we're trying to uh, build up berms and do different things as we're building that, it'll, it'll come in phases, definitely. But it's not, you know, if we were trying to excavate that ash, it would just be like a, a steady, you know, truck after truck after truck kind of thing for years if we were having to truck it out. With the soil, it'll just, it'll be when we need it, when, as, as we're trying to bring it in to do certain segments of the construction. And I do challenge that $1 billion cost I just buy rail and truck and uh, move the material from to the rail. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the billion. I mean, again, we we've gotten proposals. I mean, we've gotten, you know, we we've gone through several different iterations of Senate bills, and we've gotten proposals, and uh, you know, we we have good data for that. So, I'm gonna. Okay. I, I, he had his hand up first. I saw Dean. Okay. He'll, he'll be next. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Anthony Robinson. I live on Possum Point. Uh, to follow up on Ralph's question, uh, when you were doing ponds uh, A, B, and C, mm -hmm. or uh, A, B, C, and E, right. you had a lot of truck traffic. We did. There were times we did, there's no doubt. Who was responsible to ensure that these trucks do the speed limit? Because there was not one truck in the year that you were hauling that dirt that did the actual speed limit. Well, I can tell you this. If if we, if we were notified, if somebody said, hey, we have an issue with the truck, 
we absolutely tried to find out who it was. And there's times we kick some of those people off the job. It was all of them. Well, I, you know, I, mean, I wasn't aware of that. I mean, and, and for Ms. Bailey, I have a question about why, when I called the county police and complained about the traffic, did no one ever show up? I complained too. You know, that's, that's my big question. Why did the county police not show up? Well, sir, I, I, first of all, let me apologize for them not showing up. Well, I know it's not your fault. Well, I, well it's my fault. I, I have you to, need to talk to them about it. Well, and I will. I will because I, I do have a great relationship with them, and Karen is always on it when, when we get calls. And so we will make note of that and make sure that the attentiveness is given because they've always been very attentive. My apologies. It, it, you know, I don't have any explanation for the police, but. I know that I have the relationship to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Okay, because I, I, mean, I just want to know who do I sue if somebody hits me or somebody in my family? Do I sue the county? Do I sue Dominion? The trucking company? The police? You know, because eventually something's going to happen. You're lucky it hasn't happened so far. I mean, I've seen these trucks come around the turn uh, up by Brown's house and the wheels are off, the front wheels off the ground, the left front wheel is actually off the ground, they're going so fast. And if you say anything to them, you know, you're trying to slow them down or something, they flip you off. Yeah. You know, and it's just, you know, it's crazy. Well, I think, I, mean, I understand the Dominion has to do something, but they also have to do something about their contractors obeying the speed limits and protecting the community. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. And, I, and, and let me just say this. One of the things that I certainly have noticed since I've been in the seat is communication is everything and working together is all things. And so I assure you, sir, now that I'm in the seat, you have someone that you can work with okay. to make sure that this doesn't happen again. I'm going to call the police first and then I'll call you. No, you call me first and then I call the police. That's okay. how that works. All right. That's how that works. All right. So all right. please make sure of that. And, and, and if for some reason things aren't happening, um, as fast as they should, I need to know that. Okay. I need to know that specifically. Okay. And okay. now, as far as uh, Dominion, how high is this landfill going to be? Uh, I think, again, on our conceptual drawing, I want to say the peak is about 190 feet, I believe, what's shown on the poster board. 190 back there. feet. Then you've got 185 where uh, on the D, D is now. Right. You don't have that much dirt. Yeah, I mean, that's mostly ash. I mean, that's, that's well, what uh, how, how, how deep is the ash going to be and how much dirt do you have to have on top of it? I mean, it ver the, the ash obviously is going to vary. We're trying to, we're trying to you know, use a very specific footprint. We're trying to consolidate as much ash as we can and we're, you know, obviously create the dome shape so that, you know, water can, can you know, once we get everything in cover and all that. Again, I don't have a specific, at this point, how much soil is needed or those kinds of numbers, but obviously as we go through the process, we will obviously have to go through a permitting process and we'll have to answer those kinds of questions. But I, you know, at this point, it's it's a rendering, it's conceptual. Right. So I don't, I don't really have a number for you at this point. 190 feet and 185 feet. feet. Now, it's gonna look like two mountains, the Twin Peaks behind my house. It's it's really, I mean, compared to what's there now, if you look back up through there, it's it's really, uh, it's it's comparable to the to the slope that you're seeing now, back, back through there. No. <laughs> Yeah, that's so, 190 feet is 19 stories. Right, it is. And that's a whole lot higher than what you've got there now. Believe me, I'm an old barber. Yeah. I know. I understand that. I'm not. Yeah, I understand. I'm just saying the way the lay of the land. But you're right. It, it's going to be. It's going to be higher in some of those spots. But again, we're we're going to to try to work it to where you know. Again, we're going to cover it with with uh, grass and different things, and you know, blend in with the rain now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Robinson, thank you very much for bringing that up. We, you know, I wanted to mention something that um, we talked about at the right. meeting the other day, and that was we talked about, Yolanda reminded me of this, that um, we could and, and would uh, make sure, like find out when the deliveries are going to be and, look, and let you know, those kind sure. of things, when we know. But um, as far as speeding, we, um, we obviously don't condone anything like that right. because safety um, is our number one core value. And, Right. We are glad to know about all that. Absolutely. Here, Dan. So. 
So, uh, Dominion's your your own consulting report about groundwater contamination on the sites uh, says that there's exceedances for groundwater contamination. Um, your own consultant basically says the, your ideas of allowing for natural attenuation. You're not they're not even sure how that would work or how long it would take for it to work. So uh, my question is twofold. One is. And I tried to ask this the other day when we did the site visit, but nobody had the answer. You said you would have it here today. So my question is, two, one is, how can you build a landfill, a coal ash landfill on a site where there's already groundwater contamination underneath of it and exceedances for groundwater contamination, knowing you're gonna be stirring up that contaminated groundwater? I asked Tom Smith, who used to be a solid waste manager tonight, he said he had no idea how that could be done. So that's one question. The other one is, your presentation said that you were going to comply with all DEQ regulations, but EPA is saying that natural attenuation of contaminated groundwater at coal ash sites is not an acceptable option. They're coming down hard, they're in other states, Alabama, Georgia, telling utilities that is not an acceptable option. So I don't understand how your consultant report is recommending natural attenuation and they're saying, we're not sure that that's gonna work or even how long it would take to work, but you're gonna move forward with um, trying to support natural remediation. Okay, good questions. Uh, I'll start off and then I'm gonna hand it over to one of our environmental uh, managers within demand. So I'll just point out a couple things. Uh, good questions. I mean, obviously uh, up to this point, uh, you know, well, I'll be back, back up a few years. Our original plan was to cap in place. And of course, we had these uh, ash ponds that we cleaned, they were not lined. Uh, this pond D, while this ash in it is not lined, uh, we we're getting ready to go through a very extensive liner uh, system, a uh, double liner system. And so we're, we've excavated all that ash. We've taken all that ash out, so we've removed it. Uh, we're going to remove all of the ash out of pond D, so that'll all be taken away, so you won't have that ash touching any of that water it won't be you know it won't be in contact with it it's going to be in a brand new containerized if you want to view it that way a containerized sort of system that will hold everything in and we'll have a detection system we'll have a leachate system that we will be monitoring again we have to inspect it so we'll continue to monitor all of that thing or all those things and so basically that is the main difference again i think for several years and when we first started this process the biggest concern people had was well, Dominion is trying to cap in place. These are unlined ponds. Okay, they changed. The, the, they said, no, Dominion, you're not going to do it. So we're not going to do that. We are. We're going to build state-of-the-art landfills. We're going to do the very, the very best that we can to make sure it's containerized. So that removes the source. So that's that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing, I guess, um, I can't remember the second part of your question. So our EPA is now saying natural uh, attenuation so, is not acceptable. Yeah, and I don't know exactly. Um, the context of that, but my guess would be it's probably to people in these areas that are again trying to cap it in place and are probably trying not to put in a liner system. I'm, I'm guessing. I don't really know. I don't know the context of that co that comment. But again, we're putting it in the, into a lined system that will that that will stop that contact. And so that to me that's a key difference. That's a huge difference from where we were just a few years ago when we were going through this process. So. Yeah. But I just wanted to let everybody know that my uh, senior aide, Jacob, has questions online, okay. and so he's going to give okay. you the questions. Okay, so she, she had her oh, she, Okay, all right. Hi, good evening. Thank you yeah. for holding this and sure. uh, giving us some information about this. I have a couple of questions, and I apologize for missing the presentation, but I did receive the email that they sent to the Potomac Shores residents, and one of those emails said that this um, coal ash or um, this landfill was going to be located a thousand feet from uh, the homes in the southern area of Potomac Shores. Um, why, why that one, question number one is why this location? So you don't have to answer that quite yet. Okay. Is, question two is going to be do you have a plan B? Question three is do you need our approval to move forward? Because I'm hearing a lot of very valid questions, and I'm also hearing a lot of, I don't have that until we start. Okay. Um, so do you need our approval before starting? Because I guarantee you we're gonna need the, uh, the, the studies, 
We're going to need the full finish plan. We're going to need the names of the trucking company that's been contracted to move it so that they can be held responsible from the very beginning. So before any approval goes through for this, I'd like to see these, these questions answered and, um, and a complete plan in place because what we don't want to do is to start something that is going to cause any type of contamination, cross-contamination to the homes that we have. And I would ask everyone in this room, if you have not seen or read already, go to the EPA, go to the different areas in our communities and read some information about what has happened when other landfills and chemicals are being uh, planted near uh, residential homes. If any of you are willing to guarantee our investments, I would say let's move forward. But unless Dominion and whoever else is coming up with these wonderful ideals are going to guarantee the investments that we've made in these homes, I pause on this plan and I would recommend that you make a plan B. Um, one of the studies that I would like for you all to read is about Gordon Plaza in Louisiana and see what happened when they were promised that their homes were going to be okay and that there wouldn't be any contamination. That was something that occurred over 40 years ago and they're still trying to get out from under it. Um, thank you. Okay. All right, I'll try to answer your questions. Good questions. Uh, so the reason we're, we've chosen this area is because it's on our property. We own. We own our property. Um, the presentation, by the way, you said you, you missed it. It is online, and uh, there's a link, so you can get that and download it. But on the, one of the, tell you what, can we bring up, can somebody bring it back up the presentation to show? Um, keep going back, please. Go back, go back, keep going, go back. Uh, yeah, uh, tell you what, keep going, I'm sorry. Go to the trucking route, I think that's probably the best one. The trucking, yeah, right there. Okay, so that green area, kind of where we're showing, we own that property. It's next door to our what we're calling Pond D. So that was kind of why we chose that area. It's literally next door. It's the shortest route. It's going to be the quickest way we can do it. And again, it's all within our control. Uh, we're we're the ones. Again, demand is on the hook here. We're going to be the ones to go out. We're going to be the ones to contract it. We're going to be the ones that are going to manage the work completely agree with the gentleman we can't have people speeding you know make that known we will absolutely take care of it we have to do that that's that's our job we're, we're going to make sure that we do that safely uh so that's why we chose that area it's right there next door to us and we and we again that's something within our control the next option b that you were talking about we have a uh, go back to the the uh the show the different options so this is again thank you so on-site landfill and then the recycling so again, that's a lot of information, but I just want to make you aware that's part of the presentation. We have looked at some of these different options. Uh, again, we're looking at costs and duration and the permitting that goes along with it. Again, trying to be very thorough. I mean, I, 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 you know, we're, we're being completely, this is wide open. We've done several uh, Senate bills. We've had to go through this several times, getting proposals, getting estimates. So this is, this is a lot of information. I know we try to condense it down to make it, you know, just somewhat summarized so you can look through it. But this, this represents a lot of years of work. And then the last part, yeah, we, we have to get county approvals. We have to go through the county process. We're working with, uh, you know, the, the county. Uh, that's part of this task force. That they're, you know, we're trying to work with the task force, get the input, and we go through the process. So I view this as one of many steps. And again, we're proposing to build a landfill, but, you know, we got, we got to go through the process. So that's, I think I got, I think that was your question. You did uh, talk about the protection of the public. The reason the legislation came about was mm -hmm. to protect the public. Absolutely. So the legislation was very clear. It was about, again, so much of it had to be beneficial to use, some of it, but we did have the option to either build an on-site landfill or an off-site landfill. So again, that was in the law. Uh, that was part of, but again, we're on the hook for that. It's not. It's, again, we can't walk away from anything here. Whatever it is we do, we're going to do it, you know, and we're going to be, we're going to be managing it for decades. Okay, is there a chart in here? Does, is there any portion of this chart that reflects some of the costs that the county has incurred to build these facilities? Or is it just well, again, just on the chart that talks about the different impacts of these various options? 347. Right. 
million strikes me as the cheapest option, but it doesn't tell me the cost. Right. So again, um, that's you know the line the, again right now these, this hash was in unlined ponds and, and again we were told you know you can't cap a place you've got to move it somewhere where it can be contained and that's what we're doing whether you no, do that you just said you're not moving it anymore. we're moving it we're line moving it to a new landfill it's in a pond it, it's in a pond now and it doesn't have the liner system that we're proposing to do now so again tell us about. Not, I'm not aware of, a, of another. There may be one. I'm not aware of it. But again, not the, not the material, just adding a, a second layer. This, you know, most landfills only have the one layer. So you don't know what really can be to what protection the um, so it, it's going to it's going to just provide additional protection in case there is, you know, again we don't think there's an option. We think single liner is is good enough, and that's what most people do. But we've agreed to do a double liner system here. Because it's probably been some results from a one liner system. If a one liner system was 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 good and fine and acceptable, there wouldn't be the well, we're, we're doing one-line systems in other locations as we speak. I mean, they're, it's fully recognized as acceptable. It's, it's, but again, we were asked to do a double liner, so that's what, that's what we're doing. So what kind hang of material are you made of? <laughs> Good evening. Uh, I'm Scott Klein, and I'm on the task force. But I'm also in the development business, and I find that your numbers are seem to be you seem to be very secure with them when you start using three three hundred and forty seven million seven hundred and three million nine hundred and forty three million but when these gentlemen asked you about the trucks going on off bringing dirt in from off site you said you didn't have that information yet it kind of surprises me that you haven't done a cut and fill analysis yeah and you show zero trucks on the on site landfill but you haven't done a cut and fill analysis, but you're able to come up with well, these numbers. So the I mean, you're talking about a tremendous amount of dirt. A tremendous amount of dirt. Yeah, and there, there will be, again, there will be some soil. That's not my question. My question is, how could you come to that number without having done a cut and fill? Because and haven't done some engineering, and then show the public no trucks being on those roads on the on-site landfill. Because that, was, that, those, that transportation is, is moving ash. That's moving ash off-site. Okay, I think I made my point. I just have two quick ones up from online. Okay. The first is from Clifford Beasley. What are their long-term obligations to the impacts this burial site could have on the residents and people downstream. The burial site? I'm sorry. The I believe they mean the landfill. Okay. The long-term obligations is we will continue to monitor, um, we're required to continue to monitor any uh, groundwater impacts. Um, we, we have to continue to monitor to ensure that the, uh, the new landfill is working properly. So there's, there's a monitoring, there's testing, there's inspections. And we will, that's forever. That, that's basically for the inspections of the, of the, of the uh, facility itself. We will do that. We, we will own that. That'll, that'll, just, that'll be forever. The, uh, the, the groundwater testing will continue to do that for, for decades. Great. And where can folks find the seismic stability report? That's from Terry King. Uh, again, I'm not sure where, the, he's asking where the seismic is. So the, the one for on so the seismic report for Pond D will be on our public website at dominionenergy.com slash CCR underneath the Possum Point site. That's Pond D, but I guess they're asking for the, for the new site. Yeah, yeah, but so the, the seismic report for the Pond D will ostensibly be 
uh, give you the information for the for the local area. So it'll be relatively the same. We'll we'll have to tweak it for the permitting process for the landfill, but the information will get it'll be a starting point for you for at least for for your evaluation. All right. So I know we had some questions. What is the uh, liner made out of? Is it concrete or? It's HDPE. It's a, uh, so is it's a synth synthetic. Uh, it's yeah, it's a polyethylene, very hard, uh, plastic like material. Yeah. yeah. Well, so we could leave. Well, again, as part of our construction, we have to test it. Right. We have to inspect it. I mean, we have to make sure it doesn't leak when we install it. And, yeah, the pieces are welded together. Again, it's again a very uh, extensive process. And again, the fact that we're going to do a couple of those now, we're, right. we're, we're saying we're doing two, that we so feel. Any idea confident. how long they generally last? Is well, again, that, that was a question. We, yeah, it's a good question. We've gotten that question before. Um, there's a scientific paper that talks about these, these types of materials and these types of liners. And at the temperature, you know, different temperatures and the temperature that we expect this to be at would be 400 year range. So you're talking basically, you know, for the foreseeable future, this material. And again, we're doing two liners, not one. So I think it just adds to it. Is that bottom and side? I'm sorry? Bottom and side. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All, yeah. Anything, yeah, anywhere the ash is, it, it, that liner material will be there. Yes, I couldn't hear it. So I know there's a gentleman in the back that had a... Oh, there's, there's two guys here are raising their hand. She's got a real quick one. Here we go. Oh, man. Just, are there any studies on the degradation of materials on that plastic? Will it leach into the groundwater? I mean, will we be looking at a similar problem in another 10, 15, 20 years? Uh, I, I'm not aware of a degradation study like that. I mean, again, that's why we would continue to do the monitoring. I mean, that's why we're, you know, as long as that, that system is in place, we're, we're going to be there monitoring, we're going to be testing, sending results to the EQ, all that stuff will be public. So for the, you know, for decades and decades, we'll be, we'll be testing this and all that stuff will be public. Spencer, that 400 year mm -hmm. uh, number that you just gave for the liner, that's from an organization, right? What is the name of the organization? I don't recall. Do you Geosynthetics. Geosynthetic Research, Research Institute. Institute. Yeah, they, I think they, we can set up a link if yeah. we can send out a link. Which says it, it's good for 400 yeah, years. Right. That's what the, Absolutely. So, Peggy, we had some folks over here. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. Uh, Doug Willis Black, I live over at River Heritage. Uh, first off, obviously, thank you for the electricity. We all use it, uh, and things have changed. Uh, when we need to get rid of this, of this uh, material. Uh, so my question is, I was wondering, I didn't see up there anything about using the Potomac to use barges. Uh, from my remembrance, uh, per mile, using waterways is a lot cheaper in transportation. Right. And I'd be much happier to see that disappear. Um, and so I'd like to see that. And second, uh, for the, just a comment, uh, I would recommend that for those that live on, on the roads and are concerned about the truck drivers, which I think a lot of our sub, sub, subcontractors, if we just make sure they're clearly marked and they just hire a company, go out there with a camera and a radar, take pictures and send them tickets, just like they do on the interstate, uh, that might fix a problem once they start losing money. Uh, but I was curious about the barge question, sir. Yeah, so the barging thing, I mean, uh, yeah, so the bar barging question, good, good question. I mean, that's something that uh, we've been asked several times. I know we're going to have more discussions. Uh, Yolanda mentioned that earlier, that we're going to have some additional. But I'll just throw this out there. Um, throughout these different processes where we've had people come in and we've been asked to do proposals, we were asked, hey, is barging an option? We said, absolutely. If you want to barge it, then by all means barge it. Uh, we, we're looking for the most efficient way to do this. We've got a time clock, we've got a cost, we've got impact. So basically, uh, the initial, I'll just say this, and we, you know, the cost and the duration seem to be very, very high. And there's a lot of complications. The pier system would have to be replaced at the site. So, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of issues there. But good, good question, and I get your point about the uh, the drivers. Point well taken. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. It's, so far you're talking about, pond, it's a pond, which means to me it's water, not just dirt. What are you doing with the water and how are you process it before? So, it yeah, so, uh, yeah, it is called a pond. I know it's a little, yeah, it's a little different. It, there is a lot of ash underneath that water. Uh, so, there, you know, all that ash we took from the other ponds and the soil and whatever we removed. All, and, they, and there was already ash there in Pond D before we started with the other pond. So there's the, you know, the ash that was originally there and then the ash that we piled on top of it. So all that water, the rain, all that gets captured, uh, the other pond that gets captured, we pump it back up. So we're, we're keeping that on site. We're not allowed to release it. In order for us to release that water, we're gonna have to put it in a water treatment system. And that will, again, that's regulated. So you dry the pond out before you start digging it? Yes. We'll, pump, we'll pump that water. And it'll go through a system where we treat it. Okay. And as we pump that water down, we start taking the ash. Now there's going to be water in the ash, so as that water comes out again, we're going to have to capture it and start keep treating it. So that'll that water treatment will initially do a lot of that up front just to get get it down to the ash. But as we dig the ash out, that'll be an ongoing process because there's just water inside the ash, and then when it rains, it's going to be captured in that pond as well. So it'll it'll be throughout the whole duration. Of, of this ash will be treating the water. The, the law requires the closure of these ash ponds, right. these coal ash right. ponds, and that's that's what this right. is all about. Thanks again for the presentation. Quick question on the the cost there on site. It's three forty seven million for double liner. Yes. So what will be the cost for a single liner? Uh, you know, I'd have to go back and, and go through the detail and test. I don't, I don't have that number off the top of my fingertips. I'm guessing it's cheaper, right? <laughs> oh, it would be, it would be a little cheaper, yeah, because you're not only talking about material, you're talking about labor to put it in. So there's definitely an impact there. But again, it's something that we were asked years ago when we first started this process. Hey, would you guys entertain this? And we said yes. So that's that's what's baked into that. That number. Yeah. So fast forward four or five years, let's say. Dominion still feels on site. It's what has to happen. Residents feel we want this thing out of here. <laughs> who, is, who makes a decision here as far as what happens next? That's my question. So, given I'm not a scientist, but what I've read is it's a bit concerning if you have kids and you have homes and close to this thing. I mean, just yeah. feels so. Just, no, just want to know what happens down the road. No, no good, good questions. Uh, so we, we've kind of touched on it, but we obviously our first step is with the county. So, you know, we, we would have to work through the county and go through the local uh, approvals before we could submit anything to the Virginia DEQ. And then once you go into, you know, DEQ, you're submitting a solid waste permit. You're going through that whole process, which could take a couple of years. And again, there's, there's public processes public input, I'm sorry, that would be a part of that process, and then, then you would start construction. So, again, I uh, really haven't touched on timelines, but, you know, it looks like if, if we were to go down that path, you're talking at least probably a couple of years before we're really able to do any real real construction on the pond itself, you know, on the landfill itself. So. We've got about 10 more minutes, so keep your okay. questions real tight. Right. Sure, we got questions. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good evening. I, I'm a resident in uh, Potomac Shores. Uh, I'm author Edward Roy. Um, I know that uh, Potomac Shores just built a mound right at the base of, uh, I think, what's, what's that, River, River Heritage Boulevard there? And I know they did not spend $347 million on it. Okay, and it's about uh, the same size as yours. Now, I, I do have, you know, I'm a retired construction manager myself, and I really find your figures extremely, extremely high. Right. So, and that gentleman in the back, uh, he's not here now, I think he would, uh, he made the comment earlier that uh, these are extremely, extremely high figures. And uh, I, I was hoping to hear from the representative who said that she was looking into barging. I think uh, someone else mentioned barging, which might be a better alternative than any of the uh, alternatives you have up there because it would really be moving the ash out of the community. And I think uh, that's what would satisfy everybody, I, I believe. To get rid of it. 
So uh, I don't want to beat you up too bad, but I think you guys got some homework to do. Uh, before you come back to the community, make sure you have those figures on what it costs to barge this material out of a community. Now, let me just give you a little insight. Uh, Potomac Shores have had a lot of difficulties with a plan to put a marina down at the um, base of uh, Cherry Hill Road. Uh, they have a little wharf there. It would be a fantastic idea if you guys will build a m small marina to move your ash out. That way you would gain some support from this community and you could barge it out of here and we would have a small marina free of charge for the community. Tell them uh, Arthur Edward Roy suggested that one to you, okay? Right. All right. <laughs> So I'll, I'll touch on this. Uh, good, good points. Uh, we we are obviously understand. Uh, uh, sorry. Okay. Was this going to be zoned or licensed as a hazardous landfill? It's not a municipality landfill, so it'll be called a, it'll be zoned a hazardous landfill. Uh, I will uh, won't be zoned. I mean, ha uh, hazardous is is uh, actually not actually classified as as a hazardous. Material, uh, so it'll just go through the normal uh, landfill process as far as you know, you know how it gets approved and things of that nature, how it's categorized. But normal landfills won't take this. Uh, they have not not this particular not this app, but they, uh, there's other landfills that have taken ash in the past. And will any bonds be posted if if this was to go forward? Are bonds being posted for performance bonds? And you mean like we we hire yeah, contractors? You. No, for, for Dominion to make sure they do it correctly. Um, I'm not sure. Typical yeah. big projects, they, they put, you know, we, performance we, bonds. I up. mean, uh, we, 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 we have done that, but I'm not exactly you, sure like, how, much, every every day question, how much. I'm not sure how much that, that would be. Yep, go ahead. And it will be daily cover put on the ash as it's placed? So it won't be daily. Uh, it'll be... Um, as we do certain sections and we'll stack it we'll keep we'll maintain it so we could put temporary cover on like if we're if you know if we think there's a storm coming or something like that or we need to do something temporary we can do that but normally what you do is you you start trucking you know trucking it in and you start stacking it up and you get to a certain point and then you start putting you know cover on it as you're as you're building it up you'll just kind of build it almost like a pyramid kind of thing as you're is there any estimate on the amount of gallons of water that you're going to treat and put into the potomac river so that's a that's a really good question i can tell you right now the number of gallons in the pond today is somewhere in a, somewhere neighborhood of 270 million gallons of water that you're going to and we'll clean and put it in the potomac oh uh, we yeah absolutely i mean that's that's pretty standard and the cost for all this being covered by you're going to reimburse those costs from your customers, correct? No, those, those costs will be passed on to our customers. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi there. Um, my name is Jill Palermo. I'm with the Prince William Times. Um, and my question is about the water, treating the water. Because no matter what happens, the ponds are going to have to be drained and the water is going to have to come off those ponds. In 2016, when Dominion started this process, we found out, the community found out, and I reported that 33.7 million gallons of water were drained off the ponds without being treated and were dumped into the, the Quantico Creek and the Potomac River. We only knew this because the Potomac River keepers did a flyover and discovered that the liquid on the pond was drained down. And Dominion, subsequently told us it was 33.7 million gallons. Now that's enough to fill 51 Olympic sized swimming pools. DEQ at the time was not told that this was done. Dominion at the time said that that was surface water and that it was drained because it didn't come in contact with the ash. So can you clarify, will that happen again? Or are you, can you promise the community that all of the water that's released will be treated? So, I, I, yeah, all the water, again, every gallon of water that is in that pond right now 
or any water that comes in, you know, that we capture as part of our system today. And as we're excavating ash, every ounce of water that gets in contact with the ash will be treated. That gets in contact with the ash or that's in the pond? Both. 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 It is going to be treated. Right now, all that water that's in the pond right now, it will be treated. And any ash that comes in contact with the ash will be treated. we got two or three more folks. Oops. I want to thank the lady in front of me for talking about landfills. She seems to know a little bit about health and welfare of the community. My name is Hilda Barb. And I live on Cherry Hill Road. And it was amazing to hear whoever was in charge of the committee to say they had picked folks from the surrounding community. No one picked anyone from Cherry Hill Road. We are part of Potomac Shores. I cannot believe for one moment that these folks who spent almost a million dollars for their homes had any idea whatsoever what was going to be dumped in their backyard. They did not know. We talked tonight about moving coal ash from one pond to another. You talk about possibilities of the future for the park authority. They've already told you they don't want the land because the soils are contaminated already. There's so many unanswered questions here. We haven't talked about the people whose wells on Cherry Hill Road are contaminated. We give promises, oh, we're looking into it. Well, they've been looking into it for a long time, and we have been dealing with coal ash for more than 40 years. It rained on us. You couldn't even open your windows. We hear all the good things. I hear you talking a lot about cost. What about lives? What about the lives that have already been lost? We lost eight people on Keys Ridge Road that backs up to this dump. It is a dump, sir. It's not going to be a pleasant landfill. Has any of you ever seen Mount Trashmore over in Dumfries? You see how high that is? It looks like a mountain. A mountain in their backyard. And guess what? It's still going to be contaminated. We have not yet talked about the rail. It's kind of skipped over. That coal that did the, put in the contamination. It came in on that little rail spur. And that spur, sir, is still there. It came in on rail with the coal. You need to take the coal ash out on the rail and take it to a proper place. I heard you say before that there was a place in New Jersey, one in Pennsylvania, and one in North Carolina. We don't need it in the Potomac River. It's already, we. Quantico Creek and the Potomac River are already so contaminated. The kids, if you took a kid with a fishing pole down to Quantico Creek at night, the fish would light up. It's that contaminated. And I gotta tell you, there's people here that I don't believe, believe one iota of this propaganda that you put out. And I can tell you, every home they got this, most of them thought it was a piece of trash nail, threw it away. All of those folks paid a million dollars for their homes. Let me tell you, more of them would have been here. I want you to know I personally put out 100 flyers to get people here tonight, and I paid someone $75 to deliver 100 flyers. That's out of my pocket. I'm not here tonight because I'm gonna benefit from this. I'm worried about the children of those folks who bought those homes. This is propaganda. You don't even have all your answers. Those numbers, they're a bunch of BS, and you know it. We need, we need to come back with more answers to the questions being asked here tonight, and especially about health, welfare, and the environment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if I could have just a couple minutes, my comments are a little bit different this evening. My name's Carrie Needham. I'm here representing the Prince William HOA Roundtable. It's a rel relatively new organization. We represent between 25 and 30 HOAs across Prince William County. 
Uh, we've got membership from uh, tens of thousands of citizens across the region, and the goal and mission of our roundtable is to advocate for the best interest of communities, neighborhoods, our environment, and good land use planning policies across Prince William County. There's a lot going on. Some of the things we're involved in right now are dealing with the proposals for the Bi-County Parkway, millions of square foot of data center and industrial uses in the Occoquan watershed, um, and, and many other um, broad county issues of great importance, this issue of coal ash being one of those. Um, we are uh, here to advocate and support the homeowners, the communities, and the HOAs in this area. Um, we believe, from what we've heard from local residents and subject matter experts, the best thing for our community in Prince William County is to remove the coal ash from this site. Don't landfill it. We are here to work with you, advocate for you, and we would welcome your participation with us, the HOA Roundtable, to also advocate for communities across the county on other issues of importance in the interest of our residents, communities, neighborhood, and our environment with good, solid land use planning and good best practice uh, local county governance. And Thank you. And by rail. So if I, if, oh, your hand, sir, I'm sorry. He had his hand up. We, we're, let me, we're gonna have to close down in a few minutes because we have to leave the school. That's the only reason why. So sir, we'll take your question, then we'll close down. Do you have to mitigate those ponds beyond removing the ash, meaning the ground below it that has been uh, infiltrated with this coal ash byproduct? So uh, what we've had to do, like I mentioned, the ponds A, B, and C, and, and the, so when we took the ash out of those ponds, took it to D, the DEQ required us to go six inches below that, and then they did an inspection, and they saw something they didn't like, they made us go another six inches down. So they, they make us go down until all the ash is, is gone. I mean, what about the aquifer underneath, underneath again, that's, those ponds? Right, so again, we were saying that <laughs> in the past there were no liner systems in place. We've taken the ash out. Now we're going to, you know, in this new landfill, we'd have a, a liner system. We'll continue to monitor those, those areas. That's, that's, that's the plan. We're going to continue to monitor and make sure. Again, once you remove the source, you know, the, you know, it's, it's, um, we're going to be on the hook to continue to monitor and test and provide. I mean, I think that's the whole reason that these laws were passed was to clean up the environment. And I mean, you just taking the ash away is not cleaning up the environment. I mean, I've, I've seen people, I've known people where these salt piles were along for the states that their water systems have become contaminated and there's nothing they can do. There's nothing they can do. Rots their pipes out and everything else. So I mean, yes, you're doing what you have to do for these requirements, but my question is, is has the government given you any regulations on mitigating the soil below the ponds, being they were not lined? Again, we're going to remove as much as it takes, and then you know we'll comply with the, the, the permitting process. That's what we're going to do. All right. And my last words are: the county has to approve this. Those people we elect. So if I mean we can't stop Dominion from going to the federal government and the state to get these permits to do this. But we can go after the people in the county. Uh, we, we spend a whole lot of money supporting the county with our, or will, with 4,000 residents. And that's something you people better think about. I think that was for me. <laughs> let, me let me just say, let me just say, um, um, how many of you are from Cherry Hill? Raise your hand. So before you leave tonight, I want you to see my assistant, Karen Mills, back there. Make sure she has your name. Because I am your elected. And the reason why, and the, 
Sir, allow me, please allow me to respond to you, please. Respectfully so. I am your elected and I'm here to serve you without a doubt. That's the reason why we're here tonight. And I will continue to do that. I didn't want this problem either. I inherited this problem. And it should have been taken care of before I got in the seat, but it wasn't. And so I'm gonna gracefully help you get rid of this problem because that's who I am. I did it with the Montclair Pipe. Uh, Montclair Pipe has been there since 1993. Nothing was done. This is a big problem. And I'm gonna assist you in doing so. That's who I am. So lastly, what I wanna say, excuse me, let me finish please. The last thing I wanna say is this. This has to be a transparent process. A lot is in stake with this. And by transparency, Ms. Barg, I hear you. I will never leave you out of process of nothing that I'm doing because you are a former supervisor. I respect that. I want to say that in open forum. I, I trust your wisdom. I respect your wisdom. So anything that I'm doing is open door for you. Anything. So I want Cherry Hill community to know that. Why were we, we left out in this process? You were not, Ms. Barr. You, you were not. So that's why I'm making sure that we circle back and bring you back into the process because Karen Mills wants to make sure that you're a part of it. So I want to respond to that. And then, yes, sir. So tell me something. If you, if you have that position, why is the county even entertaining this? Well, sir, we have to resolve the you're issue. Against it. Why is the county even entertaining? Because we have to resolve the we have to resolve the issue, and I'm in the process of ushering through us resolving the issue because it's a long-term issue, and we're not going to resolve it tonight, and we're not going to resolve it by attacking each other, but we are going to resolve it together. I promise you that. So, so this school has been very gracious in allowing us to be here. And if it takes us having another meeting, we will do that. But we're not going to resolve it by being attacking. Not tonight. I know you're not. I know, but I want, I want us to continue the conversation. Why does the county want to turn our county into a landfill? We already have to. Sir, that's not the answer. Can we come together at a different time because we have to leave the building? And let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. So I thank you all for being here this evening. I thank you all for being here this evening. I know that is a very sensitive subject. I respect that. We're not talking about anything but coal ash tonight. And so please, if, if you feel like you, your voice has not been heard, please see Karen in the back so that we can make sure that your voice is heard and we can resolve this together. I want to thank Dominion for tonight. Uh, in a few minutes. I want to thank Dominion for tonight. And um, just as we work through this, please let your voices be heard continuously. It is not my desire as your supervisor to leave you out of the process. So thank you for being here tonight. And, and any other questions, let's take them in the back because we're getting past the time that we should be here. Thank you. Much also thank you for coming up. Appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you.